welcome back to another edition of Songs of the Ozarks, a project of the Ozark Studies Institute, an ongoing initiative of the Missouri State University Libraries. Today's date is September 5th, 2023. My name is Emily Flatness, and our special guest today is Pam Setzer, and we are meeting here at the Inn Fed and Breakfast in Mountain View, Arkansas, and the Inn was established in 1886, so... Quite a historic little place yes, for this town. Very. <laughs> and I'll, I will say this, we're in the parlor, and there has been a lot of music that has been played in this parlor through the years. Wow. And I've been fortunate to be a part of many of those jam sessions right here. So are you originally from Mountain View? I My family moved to Mountain View when I was two years old. Wow. But prior to that, I was born in Clinton, Arkansas, at the hospital there, but we actually live in a corner of Stone County. So, yes, I am uh, a Stone County native. Wow. And, uh, but we moved here when I was two. Uh, my dad worked in an auto parts store. So we moved here to op for him to open an auto parts store. It was Simmons Auto Parts. And uh, that's how we got connected to Mountain View. My dad played a little bit of guitar when we moved here. And uh, my mom had always sung in church and played some piano. Uh, but my dad, we started. they started having pickings in the back of the uh, auto parts store. Like every Thursday night, they'd gather up and play music. Wow. So I got involved when I was five years old. Wow. Playing with my mom and dad. And did your folks sing? Yes, my dad, um, he played guitar and Fraylin banjo and sang. He had, had a really great bass voice. And he's still living. He'll be 95 on uh, September 14th. <gasps> You're kidding. And he still gardens, he still fishes and hunts and all that, but his hearing is his big thing, and so he just had to, to quit playing and singing. Oh, but he's goodness. had a great bass voice. And then my mom, she played the mountain dulcimer and the auto harp, uh, Fraylin banjo. She did a little guitar and the upright bass. So we sang as the Simmons family uh, for 16 years until I was 21. Wow. Mm -hmm. So... You started playing whenever you were five in front of folks? I started singing when I was oh, five. Wow. And then when I was probably eight, I started playing the auto harp. And then at, at age nine is when I started learning the mountain dulcimer, which, of course, my mom taught me both of those instruments, which is very common uh, to pass it down, you know, generation yes. to generation. But at that time, Emily, we still have a lot of live music on the court square stage. But we had what we call the hoot nanny, and so that was every Friday night or Saturday night, and that was a big thing. We all went to the hoot nanny, and uh, we played music. And different groups, whoever showed up, played. You know, and um, if it if the weather was cold or bad, we actually met up in the uh, courtroom, the old courtroom there in the, in the courthouse. So uh, lots of uh, great memories and connections to Mountain View. Now, was there a lot of dancing at these hoot nannies? Oh, lots of jig dancing, and if it was outside, sometimes a square dance too. Really? But uh, always a lot of, of jig dancing, you know, which is different than clogging because jig dancing is your uh, kind of your own step that you make up, and clogging you have certain steps that you use. So, but yeah, there was always some, and maybe a waltz or a two step. You know, people always enjoyed that. Do you do a lot of jig dancing? Well, I used to. Now <laughs> I could do a little. I, it'd be a really short span, and I'd I'd get too tired probably. <laughs> like, oh. I need to. Uh, but yes, I used to jig dance a lot, and I love to square dance and two step and waltz. Oh, so wow. um, I enjoy that. How did you learn your little jig dancing steps? I think honestly, you know, you just felt the beat. The, the beat to the music, mm -hmm. and you just kind of developed your own little little step. We wow. call it jig dancing, you know. I mean, uh, now there's, of course, the, I guess, Irish, and there's the where they kind of shuffle, you know. You don't move your upper body, like from your waist mm -hmm. up, but jig dancing is just kind of a, a freestyle. Wow. So. What about, um, like, I've heard flat foot dancing and buck dancing, too. Yes. Um, what is different about those? You know, I'm not a real expert on that, but I think those are some where you don't use your, move your 
uh, upper body is okay. much, you know, it's more in your legs and your feet. And it's, uh, it's amazing to watch people, you know, and, and the clogging is, is very neat too. But um, we just did what we, we call jig dancing for the most part back in my younger days. I didn't see clogging much until I was older. Wow. Um, what kind of instruments would be played at the Hoot Nannies or any of the other big doings that happened here in Mountain View? Well, at the Hoot Nannies, it was, you know, the guitars and mandolins, fiddles, uh, upright bass, uh, Mountain Dulcimer, which we started. But, you know, just your basic, you know, acoustic instruments were played. And um, there were families. The Morrison family was a a long-standing family here that played, and uh, the Blair family. Um, you know, so I, I was fortunate, and I say this often, I was fortunate to grow up with all of those old-timers. Yeah. You know, and and they were unique characters, and, uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of those are gone. Most mm -hmm. of them are gone. Oh, yes. And, and I feel like now I'm kind of one of those old timers, you know. But you look awfully young to be an old timer, Miss <laughs> Pam. <laughs> well, thank you very much. But, uh, you know, you hope uh, that, I mean, they were an example to me. Yes. Growing up. So you hope that in turn, you are an example to these young people that are, are coming on. And we have so many talented young people in our area. And of course, I know in your area, you're one of those talented young folks, but um, there was a period of time when I was growing up, we had what we call the young rack and sack. Because the, the older group of musicians were called the rack and sack. And Jimmy Driftwood had a lot to do with forming that group. Uh, but then we had the young rack and sack. So when I was young and in school, like when we'd have our annual folk festival in mm -hmm. April, well, that Thursday night, it was always the young rack and sack that did the show. So uh, I'd haul my auto harp to school, and we'd practice, you know, and we'd play. My sisters would perform sometimes in a, a group of their girl, you know, girlfriends and stuff. But um, so then there was a period of time, there were no young people coming on to carry on our traditions. And so, of course, now we have what we call the Music Roots Program, mm -hmm. which is um, provided in the schools, the Stone County Schools. And so now we have, all of a sudden, we have a lot more young people, some great young bands, and that makes me very happy mm -hmm. because it has to be carried on. We don't want our music to die. Yes. Why do you think... Um Mountain View has been such a hub for music for so long. Well, of course, in the olden days, there wasn't a lot of things to entertain. You, you entertained yourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I think there was a lot of music in the homes. People learned instruments to entertain, and they invited people over to entertain. So it was a very rural area, and I think... Um, then they came up with this idea, and they, they would meet and, and perform uh, on the weekends, you know. it was, And, of course, then when the Ozark Folk Center opened in 1973, then that was like a uh, this huge auditorium that all of a sudden that, that we could take our instruments and we could perform there. So I think it's just always been um, just a lot of people that loved the music. And, and in the beginning, that was a lot of what you had to do to mm -hmm. have to entertain, you know, yourselves. And you know, you, we didn't, you didn't go to the movie much or you didn't go, uh, you just played music. And I just think it's always, and you know, Jimmy Driftwood was from this area who became a very well-known singer and songwriter. And he was very active in, uh, you know, kind of, organizing maybe to get get the music um, you know a little more organized and going and but it's just always been a, a great great place full of music and and crafts mm -hmm. you know um, 
honestly, Emily, back in the day when it would come time for the folk festival, there was the Arkansas Craft Guild, which would have out Sillamore, they had an area where they had all the crafters come in and set up, and there would be lines of cars waiting to get in there. People came for the music, but they also came for the crafts because they were very, there was a strong guideline. They had to be handmade. There was criteria you had to to be part of the craft guild. So it was, it was a big deal. So, and we still, to this day, have so many talented craft people. You know, the Folk Center still has crafts, but then there's also people that have studios at their home. You know, so Mountain View and Stone County is just full of artists, whether it's a musical artist or, uh, you know, somebody that's in crafts. There, there's a lot of talented people. And it seems that, I mean, coming here to Mountain View, it's like stepping back into a different century. <laughs> <laughs> there's such a focus on history. I think so, and I and you hope so, and yes. you know that's um, well. I do think we are at a slower pace, mm -hmm. maybe than you know people that come here. It's like you know you can just kind of go, Whew, we're in Mountain View for the weekend, and you can just relax and enjoy. It's not you know we're we're small town, uh, we're small town with a lot going on. You know, but mm -hmm. um, just like people that come here and stay at the inn with, you know, Kevin and Cherie, who are the new owners here. I mean, it's not, it, it's not just you come and stay at a place. It's a bed and breakfast. Um, they are, a lot of times there's music in the parlor. So it's just a special, unique experience. You know, it's not just you're going to the Holiday Inn and getting a room. And even if you stay in any of our areas, there's the Pick and Park. You know, there's uh, Mountain View Meeting Place. There's there's so many. Uh, Jimmy Driftwood Barn still has music going on. They have the Folklore Society. So there's a lot that people can um, experience while they're here. Blanchard Springs Caverns. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, it, it's just you know I feel fortunate that I grew up here. I've raised my children here. And now my grandchildren are being raised here. So, um, and music, I'm the youngest of four children, so music has provided opportunities for me to go places, see places. It's been educational because when you go to a different area, you see different cultures mm -hmm. and you meet different people. Um, who may not be exactly like you, you know, mm -hmm. what you're used to at home. So it's offered a lot for my life because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love it. I love to sing. I love to play. I love to do shows and all of that. But, you know, when you put the whole picture, it's been life lessons, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to go – and I played with my parents for 16 years, you know, um, which is very special. Yes. Um, so, now there were periods of time when, uh, you know, when you get in those teenage years. Yes. Where, like, <laughs> my friends were going and doing something, you know, I kind of wanted to go do something with them. And my parents said, well, you had to go sing. And uh, a time or two, I think, well, I think I'll just quit. And my dad said, no, you're not quitting. <laughs> And I'm so glad and that, thank goodness. that I didn't. <laughs> but, um, but also, I was getting to go and do things. Um, I mean, our family vacation was normally we went to Red River and we camped. And wow. we did because, you know, we were, we had a warm house and we had clean clothes and we had a great mom that cooked homemade stuff. And, I mean, we were loved and we never knew that we didn't have that much money. You know, wow, yeah. we didn't know that because we were happy. We were, we were very happy and had a great life. And but, you know, music gave me the opportunities. You yeah. know, we we went to Philadelphia for a big thing in Boston, and 
Uh, we went to the Folklife Festival in 1970. Wow, um, you're kidding me. No. <gasps> I was there with my family in 70. So, of course, then this year I got to return because they were focusing on the Ozarks again. And what a deal for me to get to go twice. Yeah, I'm uh, sure you're the only one, Miss Pam. I was the only <gasps> participant there again. So what differences did you see in the, and tell the folks, the viewers a little bit about this Smithsonian Folk well, it's, Festival, it's if you don't mind. Well, it's the Smithsonian Folklife Festival, and they focus on different areas when they have these. In 1970, they focused on the Ozarks. So Jimmy Driftwood was kind of our connecting. He was, he was well known, and so he was kind of our connecting uh, person, but there was a fairly large group that went from, from Mountain View, our Stone County, to D.C. Um, most of us had never been on an airplane. <laughs> I was nine years old. I'd never been on an airplane. And most of us had never been that far from home. So that alone was a big thing. Um, but, you know, Doc Watson and his son Merle were there that year. Uh, Maybell Carter was there. And I was old enough, I knew who those people were. And I knew what a big deal yeah. to get to meet them and hear them. Um, so it was, of course, that was, what, 53 years ago. So it was different as far as, you know, there weren't as many, um, you know, museums, I don't think, then. Mm -hmm. I, I remember we would go to the Smithsonian every time we had a break. And I don't think we still, even then, in 70s, saw everything. But right. I mean, we were just, and all the monuments. But um, at that time, they put us up in a college. We were in dormitories in 70 when we stayed. So I've laughed because, you know, of course, this time when we went, we were in the hotel. And it was all <laughs> I said, I'm moving on up. Right. But, uh, you know, it was... Even though I was young, it was an experience that I never forgot. I mean, it was, um, you know, to see, I knew enough about history to, knew what, to know that, you know, what I was there, yeah. all the monuments, and, and, uh, and we met new people. There was a group called the Loving Sisters there, and uh, they were four black ladies that sang gospel. And I just was in awe of them. I, I just fell in love with them. I would go to their tent every time I could. Aww. And they were so sweet to me. But, um, you know, it was just an, a life-changing experience. Mm -hmm. You know, that... Um, and I'm sure that some of those people... Because, you know, like I said, a lot of us had never been uh, on an airplane. Right. And, and, and that, that time we were there, maybe a week. Um, and of course, this time, this this year, I was there for two weeks. Wow. And of course, so this is the first time that they have focused on the Ozarks again. And it was, you know, people from Missouri and Arkansas. And we had a great group of combination of people. Um, you know, there were some others from Stone County that went, Sillmore Special. Um, not only was it just musicians, but, um, you know, Tina, who is a great uh, herbalist mm -hmm. and gardener uh, from the Folk Center, she went. And, uh, you know, they, I don't remember, it seems like in 70, like there was just one big stage that we all, but, you know, of course, this time there was the parlor stage and there was wow. then the bigger stage and then there was front porch and, uh, but they did everything was, up, you know, done really well. And it was another great experience. I, one thing I did, when I was there in 70, there was, we had one day that we had tear gassing. You know, that was kind of, I mean, Vietnam, end of that time. And I remember uh, my dad, he I got his hanky and put it over my face because they, they sent us down in, to the Smithsonian. And we had to wait there until they, you know, everything was clear. Yeah. So... In 70, I had tear gas, you know, that we dealt with. And this time, you know, we had the smoke from Canada, from the fires. Wow. There, because 
the opening ceremony actually got postponed because the air quality was so poor. So, you know. So what a strange, like, connection. <laughs> I was like, oh. uh, but, uh, you know, it was just... And, and I have to just brag on all of the folks from the, the, the crew that were there. I know the Smithsonian and Missouri State University had folks there that uh, they took care of us. Mm -hmm. You know, we were treated so good and just um, made new friends again and reconnected. Um, so Barry, uh, Bergie, which I had not seen in, since 1973, Wow. We reconnected, and um, John Paul Hammersmith Jr., who had not seen since like 1982, wow. he heard Mountain View. He'd come to see Brooks Blevins and heard Mountain View mentioned, and he thought, well, I wonder if that's Pam. So in a minute, they said, well, thank you, Pam Setzer. And so uh, it's kind of a fun story, but I came off the stage, and he comes up to me, which I did not realize who he was, and he says, are you part of the musicians? And I said, yes, I am. He said, well, could I get your autograph? And I said, oh, well, sure, you know, sure. Yeah. So he had paper and pen. He goes, make it to uh, John Paul Hammerschmidt. And I was like, oh, my gosh, because we had not even spoken since, you know, and, and the chances of us connecting. Right. You know, so it was really a, a great experience. And. Uh, we had a lot of fun, played a lot of great music, and uh, it was a real honor to be part of that. Would you say there was any differences in, like, um, the div diversity of musical genres there this year versus in the 70s? Well, you still had that mm -hmm. diverse because you had, like I said, the Loving Sisters were there representing mm -hmm. Arkansas, and they were more... You know, I don't know if you'd say Southern Gospel, I don't know what they were, but mm -hmm. um, I mean, of course, from here, we were all pretty much old time folk. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't remember, um, you know, there being like the Mount, Ozark Mountain Daredevils were there this year. Yes. So I'd say probably more so this year mm -hmm. than maybe back then, but there still was. There still was different genres. Um, and of course now, you know, we have the Americana and the, that's kind of an umbrella for a lot of different um, different kinds of yeah. music. But I think we, there was still some, maybe more so now, because I think there's probably so many that's kind of branched out, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. um, they may not be just pure folk. They may have a combination of bluegrass, maybe a little country. So they kind of slide up under... I guess you would say the Americana. Right. So. Did your family mostly identify with old time music? I would say we were more old time folk, mm -hmm. you know, music. We played, um, you know, because my mom, now, the Simmons family, Dean Hinesley, he played with us for several years, and he played the, the three finger style okay. banjo with us. Um, I still wouldn't say we did like hard drive and bluegrass, mm -hmm. but, but we had a little bit of that in there, but we, I would say we were more folk, gospel, touch of bluegrass. Oh, would you mind describing in your words the difference between old time and bluegrass music? You know, for me, that's kind of hard because mm -hmm. I feel like all of it has some of the same roots, mm -hmm. you know, it's the style, because you think of a banjo, well, if it's old time, then you're going to have more of the, the fraying type banjo. If it's bluegrass, you're going to tend to have the three finger style. Mm -hmm. So to me, you know, you can take an old time song and make it more bluegrassy, or you can make a bluegrass song and make it more folky. Mm -hmm. So to me, there's a, I think some of it's how it's performed for some things. And then... You know, you have traditional uh, folk ballads, which I love, and like Barbara Allen, or um, I mean, "The Water Is Wide" is a beautiful oh, folk ballad. Song. But um, you know, I again, here I go with the olden days because you know, like I said, we could talk for a long time because I've done this a long, long time. Oh, yeah. 
Um, but Almeida Riddle and Ollie Gilbert, I grew up knowing them. Wow. Um, Aunt Ollie, when we would travel uh, to shows with Jimmy, we in my family we did a lot of shows with Jimmy going wow. places, and and Ollie sometimes would go and I would sit by her and she had all of her song titles written on a big roll of adding machine tape. Wow. And I would say, Aunt Ollie sing so and so song and you know she'd just sing them. Um, she did play a little bit of banjo, but she did most of her stuff a cappella. And she lived just right across the street from us for a while. And I would go spend the day with her. And like she taught me the song Roving Gambler and um, she'd tell me stories and she'd tell me jokes. And sometimes she would say, Now, uh, when you go home, don't tell your mom and dad that joke. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a little bit, you know, on the edge, like for me to know, I guess. You know, I didn't probably even realize. But anyway, she said, Don't go home and tell your mom and dad that story. Uh, but that's what I mean about how fortunate I've been, you know, to be, know all those people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Aunt Ollie, uh, she was quite the character. And, uh, and Almeida, you know, they, they both had a lot of, a lot of songs and a lot of those, you know, ballads. My mom always loved to hear me do Barbara Allen, mm -hmm. and I still do it some. I'd say, I just feel like they're going to be ready to throw something at me before I get finished because a ballad tells a story. So you can't really leave out verses. You know, you got to tell the story. And so there might be several verses, yeah. you know, to tell it. <laughs> but, and you know, um, I mean, like I said, with our family, I feel like, and I, and I play with my family until I was 21. When I turned 21, I got the opportunity. Um, Charlie Sandage, who's a great singer and songwriter from this area, and another great singer, songwriter, Ed Ryland, they wanted to put together a band and a show in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And it was at the Mid-America Amphitheater. You've heard of the Mid-America Museum, which is still there. Uh, well, this was a big amphitheater connected. And um, so I was asked to be the lead female singer. And so I, you know, I, I had a place there in the summer and I'd come back here in the winter, but uh, that was, that really was a growing thing for me. Mm -hmm. I think as a singer, performer, I mean, I, I always sang lead mm -hmm. with mom and dad. I never sang harmony. As a matter of fact, <laughs> once there was this song we were working on and I was supposed to sing harmony. Well, I would do about two or three lines harmony and then I'd bounce right back to the lead. And so finally my parents said, just go ahead and sing lead. <laughs> <laughs> so when I went to Hot Springs, I was the lead female singer, but as part of my job, I still had to sing harmony. Mm -hmm. So that was a real learning as far as, that's really when I learned to sing harmony. I would... There was this was a full band, so this was not just folk music. You mm -hmm. know, this was a full band, and um, and it was the it was called the country music story, and it was truly the music the story. We had an MC who actually told like we start on the porch, you go to the church, you go to the bar. You know, it was that kind of the, amazing. It was an amazing show, an amazing band, and we'd have. Like the front porch, we were all acoustic, you know, and I played dulcimer and all that. So it was quite, but I would, I would ask the piano player to play my harmony part. And mm -hmm. I would stand and sing with that over and over until I got that in my head. And that's really when I started singing harmony. And so it was really... Um, you know, it was that was a real growth for me mm -hmm. as far as as a singer, uh, performer, and we we did the show six nights a week. Wow! So it was you know it was kind of a it was a two hour show, and 
I had wardrobe changes during it, and so it was. It was uh, so when I when I finished that, um, then I I came back to Mountain View and and I did some different things. Um, and my mom had formed a group of Leatherwoods, so at some point I came back into that group, um, and which Leatherwoods is still an existing group, um, but. You know, so doing those things, I'll, I'll never forget my mom. Uh, my parents always encouraged me. They always encouraged me in it, that I was good enough to get out and do it. But they never were like, you're the best or you're the, you know. Yeah, still kept you humble. Yes. That's amazing. Because um, you, you've got to feel like that you're good enough to get up there to sing. Or play your instrument or whatever but there are others that are just as good or better you know there's always so you what just you always have to focus on what you have been gifted mm -hmm. and do it the very best you can and that's what you can do you know um, so they were always very but but my point of saying that is I remember saying to my mom, I said, you know, you know, when I got that opportunity, I, you know, I just don't know if I've, you know, got enough experience to do it. She goes, well, you've got 16 years experience because I've been singing and playing and performing for 16 years. And I'm like, well, yeah, I guess I do. And so, but it kind of took me to another level. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like, and you're, I'm sure you're seeing that. As you grow and you mature, you should always, you're going to keep going to different levels mm -hmm. in your performance, you know, and um, being comfortable on stage, you know, I, I, uh, I've always been a talker, so even at the park store, I would sit on the stool and talk to the people that came in to buy stuff all the time, so that's never been a problem, um, but you know, it's still, it's, it, I think you, uh, what is it, you're hone, honing your craft? Mm. Is that yes. the word I'm Yes, I, think, okay. I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're always trying to improve it, you know, yes. and, um, but, so now, you know, I play, uh, but do you have any other, you have another question for me? Or what, or I do, I'm kidding? curious if that's, um, whenever you sort of transitioned to doing country music as well, or if you kind of had done some country music before you started that show? No, I really, I mean, I mainly have performed with my family. And, um, I mean, we might have thrown in something like Linda Ron's That Love is a Rose, in mm -hmm. our, but it was done just acoustic. I never played really with drums, and we had a pedal steel, and electric guitar. I mean, it was a, a full country mm -hmm. band. And uh, so it was, it, that was quite an experience too. And they were all so talented. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, it would go, and they were very multi-instrumentalist multi because they might play the pedal steel, but then they might turn around and play the fiddle. or the, So everyone played a, a role in, in every different different segments mm -hmm. you know even the drummer in our acoustic he might have done a, a rub board or something you know oh, just so, so it was uh, but yeah that was a, a big branch out for me yeah and and I still I've always loved to do you know if you come to one of my shows today I love to do all kinds of music I mean I may sing a a love song, something like At Last, mm -hmm. that was done by Etta James. Mm -hmm. I love those kind of songs. Or uh, an Emmy Lou song, or maybe, you know, uh, Blue Kentucky Girl. Mm -hmm. But everything's going to, there's always going to be my roots. I'm always going to be doing Mountain Dulcimer. And I'm always going to be singing some Carter family song. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, there's, I think you don't ever want to lose your your roots yeah I don't want to because I love that yeah. and I think 
here in Mountain View, we're known for that. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to see us lose that. You know, so it's always going to be a part of me and a part of my performance. Um, you know, the water is wide. Um, my mother loved the Carter family. Mm -hmm. So she sang a lot of Carter family stuff. Gold Watch and Chain, When the Wagon Was New, uh, Stormed on the Ocean. I mean, you could just mm -hmm. name songs and songs that that um, were very old. The Airship, which is one of my most requested songs, was written in like 1903. But people still love those today. And but then I'll, I do throw some other things in, but it's still going to be done in, you know, my style. Mm -hmm. And you are what I would call a song collector. Um, is that correct? <laughs> well. Would you self-identify as a song collector? <laughs> I, I would say, I mean, I've, re I've never really thought of that, mm. but I love collecting, learning these old songs, yes. you know, I mean, that's what I grew up with, and um, just like we were saying, Barbara Allen, mm -hmm. some of these old songs that um, we don't want them to get lost. I love good old gospel tunes, mm -hmm. not that I don't love new ones, but those old ones, um, you just don't want them to get lost, and I think that's where we do have to collect. And, and preserve, you know, um, and, you know, I've written a few dulcimer tunes, and I love to sing uh, Charlie Sandage, I, he and I recently, well, three years ago, I guess, I released a, a project, an album, that was all songs either written or co-written by Charlie, and um, so, and some of those sound like they could have been, you know, there's uh, boxes of wood, which is a really neat thing, mm -hmm. it's talking about the instruments, you know, these boxes of wood. Um, so, I do love, and, and the thing I think, uh, I like songs that speak to you, mm -hmm. too, you know, I like songs that, and some do more than others. Some yeah. you like just, it's a neat tune and you have fun playing it and they're singing it, but there's some that, you know, they're special. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now that you've kind of branched into all these different genres, what is the um, one you would most identify yourself as? Wow. Well, I mean, I really still feel like I'm more identified in the like folky bluegrass mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. um, Americana maybe because I mean I do several but but I still would say um, that I mean if you hear me sing you probably wouldn't just think I was a pure country I mean mm -hmm. my music so I, I still feel like I'm, I'm acoustic, you know, oh, yeah. uh, folk, bluegrass, gospel, country. So and, a lot of like genres that have been influenced by rural living. Oh yes, that all the roots. Mm, yes. But yes, right. Um, you know, I love some of those old forties songs, the twenties. Oh, yes. You know. Um, like I said, at last is a, a love, love that, and um, so I, I would say though I still feel like I'm probably identified in that folky bluegrass type mm -hmm. stuff. But you know, I'm not just a bluegrass artist, right. and I'm not just a pure folk artist. So um, most of the time, like it's my stuff that's out there, it's, it's probably under folk, bluegrass country, or Americana, or, you know, that kind of stuff, so. Mm -hmm. Um, what musical ventures are you doing currently? Currently, 
Well, I, um, as far as like where I'm playing, performing, that kind of yes. stuff. Yes. Um, well, I perform regular here at the Mountain View Meeting Place. I have the Pam Setzer Show that is most Friday nights. Um, I have a website, pamsetzer.com, and so people can go on there to see if I'm playing and who my guests are. Um, I play in a duo called Apple and Setzer, and that's with Brad Apple. And uh, Brad grew up similar to me, playing with his family. So we do a lot of, um, he loves a lot of the old stuff too, Norman Blake and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So, um, And then I have the Pam Setzer Band. I have my own band, and uh, which Danny Yancey plays with me and Kent and Becky Coffey. And um, the Leatherwoods, which is a group I mentioned that my mom mm -hmm. formed in 83. We still play, um, not as often as we used to but we're still we're playing about four or five times this season that's amazing yes. and then there's a group called the ozark granny chicks which crystal and lillian are in it's oh we're all goodness. females and we laugh because we're all grannies except for lillian <laughs> she, we say she's our little chicken yes but anyway uh which we haven't played much lately but i hope we're going to play soon but you know so i'm doing that um i've got uh, on November 4th, I'm going to be opening up for Marty Stewart over at the okay. uh, Moonshine Festival thing over at Fairfield Bay. And October 14th, I'm going to be um, opening for the Isaacs oh. over at the John 316. So, um, you know, just some of that as far as that just shows here and there. Um, I, um, I actually, for years, I did a day job. And I did music on the side as much as I could. Um, I retired in 2018 from my day job. So now I do totally music. Wow. So I just try to play. I play regular over at, there's a great restaurant over on the lake called The Grill at Whispering Woods. Mm -hmm. um, I play there once or twice a month. And they have just, uh, it's out on their patio, which if you look to the right, there's the, the lake. And uh, just acoustic, no sound. Uh, so... You know, just um, whatever can come along. I'm, I'm able now to, uh, you know, be able to go if I need to go. You know, just yeah. like being able to go to D.C., which even if I was working, I would have figured out a way. Right. But it's so nice to not have to try to balance, you know, that. Mm -hmm. So uh, my children are grown. I have grandchildren, and so I help with them. My husband has retired, so... Uh, we try to travel. We just got back from a trip to Ireland, uh, which I took my mountain dulcimer and I played in Ireland. Wow. So, um, you know, just um, I'm very blessed. Life is good, and, and I hope I can sing and play for many more years and do a lot more fun stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom, as a matter of fact, we played at Silver Dollar City when I was um, like 9, 10 uh, we play there like once a month on a weekend, and it was, of course, it was way different than now. Definitely. There was just like Front Street, and um, but I would, they gave us these little cards, and when I got, we'd play 30 minutes on and then 30 minutes off, and on my break, man, I'd be running to what rides were there, you know, <laughs> and then I'd, I had my long dress on, and um so that that's a special, you know. Mm -hmm. We we always enjoyed that, and uh, so you know, just like I said, music. Not only does it offer you opportunities to see other places, mm -hmm. experience other places, but lifelong friends, and the people you play music with, they become like family. So, you know. It's just, there's a whole lot to it other than just saying, I'm going to sing you a song. Mm -hmm. There's a lot connected to that. Um, you know, from, from singing with my parents and then all of the people who I have played with in the, in the past and who I currently play with, you know, they're not just a fellow musician. They're my friend mm -hmm. and they're my family and that, that, some sometimes it's like Ozark Granny Chicks. We love to play together, and if you play music together, you at least see each other. 
Yeah. We're in such a busy world that visiting with people, you know, used to, you just stop by and just see somebody, but you don't do that as much these days because everyone's so busy. So it just connects you to each other, to a mm -hmm. lot of great friends. And then you have people, I have people who have been coming to watch me play since I was a teenager, wow. you know, that still, they come and they'll come to my shows and, you know, you just, that's something that you, it's special. Yeah. You know, and it means a lot. Yeah. Um, so, it's been good to me and, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping uh, my son and my daughter have the capability. It just never was what they really mm -hmm. wanted to do. Um, my grandson and granddaughter, seven and five, they seem to have some interest. So I'm hoping that's going to be my next generation. I hope. Yes. And I forgot to ask you this earlier. Did your parents, you know, did your grandparents, did they play music? Well, I, there were some people in our family that played some, but okay. not not really strong, like playing as, you know. I mean, I had an uncle that played guitar some, and he lived out in Oregon and played. Oh, wow. Um, my mom's sisters both played piano and played in church some. Um, as far as really um, performing that type of thing, no. We kind of... Uh, the Simmons family. Of course, I'm the youngest of four. Mm -hmm. I, I have an older brother who he never played. Um, then my sisters, they both played a little bit of hammer dulcimer and they can play oh, yeah. piano and they both have nice singing voices. Mm -hmm. They've sung in choir in church, but it was just never their thing yeah. to want to travel or be on stage and, you know. And for me, I've just always loved it. Yeah. So. Was your family in the Ozarks long? Um, you know, your grandparents and great grandparents, etc. Yes, my my grandparents are right for I, I couldn't tell you for sure what year, but yes, for many many years. Wow! And they lived. Um, my grandparents and my great grandparents lived over. Like if you go to Shirley towards Clinton, okay. back in the Arlberg, Lexington, old Lexington area, that's where most of them lived. Wow. So um, lots of, of history, you know. And my mom, her maiden name was Bonds. So I don't know if you know J.C. Bonds, but J.C. Bonds is from this area who is, uh, plays guitar and sings. And so, and then Gerald Bonds, who was... A uh, great fiddle player, guitar player. Those were like cousins, which JC's still living, and and uh, so he's a distant cousin of mine. Wow. So there, there is family, you know, out there that that played. What a great history. Yes. Um, yeah. what advice would you have for young or um, old folks interested in starting to play roots music? Well. Of course, I've taught many dulcimer workshops, mountain mm -hmm. dulcimer workshops, and you have all ages, and I love that because we're never too old to learn, and and there's different reasons to learn, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I have some that come to my workshop that maybe they've retired and decided to pick up an instrument. Well, they're not really looking at it that they're going to want to perform, you know, they want it as a hobby. And then you have young people who are coming on, like you, like so many here, Mary, Lillian, Gordon. I mean, there's so many that um, are just excelling, you know, mm -hmm. on their instruments and performing. And, um, and you know, you, you decide. I mean, for me, there was a time that I almost moved to Nashville, you know, to really just go for it yeah you know but but I never did I mean I was real close and I had a lot of good contacts there but you know it's a different life yeah you know you decide what you want um when I had children I wanted them to have a normal life mm -hmm. I didn't want to be on the road all the time and 
And if you can take them with you or, you know, you can make it be pretty good, but it is hard. Yeah. And um, so I, I decided I would not do it. Once I became a mom, I would just play as much as I could and try to be a mom and that sort of thing. Um, but you can play a lot and do a lot of stuff and still have a normal daytime job mm -hmm. and a normal life. Mm -hmm. um, being on the road can be hard. And, um, you know, so as a young person, you know, you kind of decide... You know, I made a choice, yeah. and and I don't regret my choice. You know, um, I, I don't know what my life would have been if I had decided and moved. I might be doing really, done really great. Maybe not. You don't know. Um, but I've kind of had best of both worlds, mm -hmm. That's and so wonderful. it's uh, you kind of have to decide what you want. You know, and there's there's nothing wrong with any of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so as a young person, you know, um, you can still play a lot, have a normal life, or if you just really want to do it, you can get out there on the road and, and see that life too. Mm -hmm. And um, it's kind of like my daughter is, she has a salon, she's a hairstylist, mm -hmm. and it's not music, but still similar. You know, she graduated, and um, she's trying to decide whether to move back home or I said, well, you can always move back home. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe get some experience for a year or two there before you move back home, which is what she did. And that's different than music, but at the same time, you know, hey, if you decide, I want to go for it and I want to play big time, and uh, it may work out, it may not work out. Yeah. But it's okay either way. Right. Because you can come back home where you're from or wherever you decide to live. And once you have that craft, you can always use it mm. all your life mm. on whatever level. Oh, yeah. That's so encouraging for maybe kids who, you know, like you said, want to quit. But once you have that craft, right, it's always there. It's always there. And oh, you can use it however. If you don't want to do nothing but play on your porch, that's okay. You want to play in big halls somewhere, mm -hmm. that's okay too. But mm -hmm. it, it needs to be, my thing is I've always said, if I ever get to where I'm not enjoying my music, mm -hmm. then I need to look at something because I love it so much yeah. that it, it needs to be that you, you enjoy it. If, it's, if, if, you're, if you're going down a road and you're not enjoying it, then you need to step back mm -hmm. and look at something different, mm -hmm. you know. Because I feel like to me, you need if you love it, the people that hear you are going to love you. I mean, I think it it eventually comes through. Yeah, you know the joy, so, the joy. The... Yeah, you know it's it, just like I said, Vic and I went to Ireland. And I did play dulcimer there, but I was so excited. to. I had a show this past Friday night, and I was so looking forward to really playing a show because mm -hmm. it had been a couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, and uh, Vic will laugh because, you know, kind of at the end of the season, if you've had a really busy year, you're kind of like, I'm kind of ready to have a break, you know. But he'll laugh because it's not two weeks till I'm, singing around the house and I'm like, I'm, I'm ready to, I'm ready to do a show. Right. You know, so I would like to travel more because, because I am where I, I can now. Yeah. Um, so I would like to figure out a way to do more, you know, maybe a little 10 day tour a few times and go to different places and I got to figure out how to do that, but I would like to. Oh, certainly. Would you, um, like want to go outside of the Ozarks? Oh, yes. That'd be amazing. Yes. And kind of share your well, I knowledge think, of the region. I think um, when you perform and you tell your story, you're sharing about, I'm always wanting to promote Mountain View in Stone mm -hmm. County and what we have. And <clears throat> it, it's such a great place to come. And so, and I'm very proud of it. Mm -hmm. I think we have... A, so many wonderful people um, 
business owners, musicians, everything, and uh, and we've got the folks, the Ozark Folk Center. We've got Blanchard Springs Caverns. We have fishing on the White River. We have bike trails. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got so much to offer, and so you know, the best advertisement is if you're out there and telling people about it. Yeah. You know, so. Um, you know, I, that those are things that I would like to do. Mm -hmm. And and growing up, um, I don't think I mentioned this, but my dad was he he over he was the overseer of the building of the Ozark Folk Center. No kidding. He was like the project manager. Wow. And then he became the first general manager of the Folk Center. Wow. So in those years the Simmons family, we traveled a lot just to promote Arkansas and yeah. Mountain View. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of travel riders in our home that we hosted from, you know, other countries and different things that uh, we had, which you're familiar with, we had what we call pickings. And my mom would always, she was a great cook. Oh, so she wow. would do like a traditional beans, cornbread, greens, homemade peach cobblers, blackberry cobbler, you know. And we would entertain them in our home, and we would have we would invite people over, and we'd play music, we'd square dance, and we'd feed them, and and they would write stories about our area. So, um, you know, we just, um, you know, we don't want to become overrun with people, but at the mm -hmm. same time, you want people to be here. I, you know, I want to see the pick and park full, the square full the meeting place full, the folklore, everybody, so that we keep it all going. Yes. Because, you know, we, we want to keep our town alive, and um, we've got great shopping, you know, just, it's just a very unique place. I still hear people who are interested in music say, oh, I just want to move to Mountain View so bad, you know? Well, and I'll be honest, we've had a few people that move just because of the music. Wow. And especially like people that retire, you know, mm -hmm. that play, and they would come here through the years and go to the Pickham Park, and when they retire, now, they may not stay here forever, you know, until they pass, because as they get older, and they're not playing as much, then they'll move back closer to the family, yeah. but we have quite a bit of that. And then we've had some, uh, I know this past year we had a family that moved in here so their children could be in the music roots program which you know provides a teacher and instruments for students to learn these acoustic instruments in our school and so it's a very successful program um, and, and and that's what has really ignited this new surge of young people mm. so it's been going on for 25 years now it's fantastic. Yeah. I didn't realize it had been going on that long. I know. Well, when I stop and think, you know, the, the Ozark Folk Center celebrating 50 years. I've played there every year. I was wow. 13 when it opened. So if you add that up, you know my age. <laughs> and then, you know, but it's hard for me to think it's been 50 years. Right. And I'm, I'm part of a group, I'm chair of it right now, the Committee of 100, which is a support group for the Ozark Folk Center. We're celebrating 50 this next year. Wow. But we have um, provided apprenticeship programs and we, we've supported, we're a sponsor of the Music Reach program since it started. So, um, you know, it's just time goes by. It and does. you know, so uh, enjoy the music, mm -hmm. enjoy the ride, and uh, I'm just hoping you know, I've got lots more music to enjoy. Oh, and I, I thank really you. thank you for interviewing. Me. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Miss Pam. Um, it's been amazing, just amazing. And yeah. would you mind playing a few songs? Not a bit. For us before you leave. Okay, so I'll do. This is um. I'll do. This is an old, like Scottish. This is called Bonnie Lass, or Scotland the Brave. Or the Old Spice commercial, same melody. <laughs> Are you familiar with this tune? No. Okay.
tuned in a DAD. Okay. It's, it's most um, the mountain dolphins are tuned in like modal tunings. This is called Mixolydian. So, and it's DAD. Um, and I play in that quite a bit. Um, Ionian is one when I first started learning, I played in a lot. Mm. Um, so, this, my other dulcimer is tuned, um, see if I can lay that here. Now, this was tuned in a bagpipe. So, basically, it's all D. It's okay. just that the bass, the, these, these three are an octave above your bass. Wow. And it has a real, see that different, um, you know, sound. It has a real, the real droney bagpipe. So I'll, I'll play a little bit of Harrison Town, which is a really old song. It actually has words as well. Oh, wow. But it was actually written about Harrison, Arkansas. more of that drone yes. than, the, than the DAD. Like, you know, it's just they all have a little different. And I love um, even the, the minor mode. There's one called Aeolian that I play in some. So. Wow. Yeah. Um, so most of the old time songs, what tuning would they be in? Well, it, it depends. You know, it, it's one thing, you know, you figure out the melody, and then you figure out if it will work in, say, the Mixolydian, or better in the Ionian, um, you know, so it wow. just depends, you know, on what, um, how the melody of it goes, but um, the finger picking is very uh, pretty as well, really? with the, the dulcimer, um, I'll show you just a I'll just play one little round of oh, thank uh, something you. finger picking. sample of the finger picking Beautiful. style. That was called Drink to Me Only with Thine Eyes, which is a very old old song too. So um I've never heard such versatility on the Mountain Dulcimer. Well, 
thank you. And I'm my style is very traditional uh, style. Amazing. I mean, there's so many mountain dulcimer players out there now that, I mean, they play all kinds of stuff on it. And I, I'm in awe of that. It's great. But, you know, I want to keep my traditional mm -hmm. style alive. So, and that's just what I've, that's what my mom played. It's what she taught me. So, uh, mine is very traditional. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your guitar a little bit, if you don't mind. It's very beautiful. This is a Gibson J200, which is my dream guitar. <gasps> wow. my, my very first guitar was a Yamaha. And, uh, of course, left-handed guitars, you just didn't find them everywhere. But um, after I started playing the Yamaha, then I, had, I ordered a Martin. I had to order it from the company because we just didn't have them. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, then I had it. I've got a couple of tailors that are left-handed, but this was kind of my. I just love this big body guitar, you know, so and a Gibson, pretty. and so my husband. We looked for it for three years, and there's a place called South Paws that sells nothing but left-handed instruments. So we kept calling them, and they'd say, "Oh, your chance of finding a, a left-handed J200 are just, you know." So one year they had like a, it was a, a tailor and it was like a sunburst. It was beautiful. It was red and all this. And I said, it's beautiful, but I've got a tailor. I don't, you know. Yeah. So we decided to call one more time and they had this guitar. Wow. So I'm like, thank you. Well, it was meant to be. Yes. So um, anyway, it's, it's very... It's a beautiful guitar, and uh, you know, Gibson, they have a good sound. Of course, my mountain dulcimers are made here locally at the dulcimer shop. So, um, you know, you can order there or go by there and buy one. But, well, uh, Emily, this is the airship, and this is, um, <clears throat> I would say, probably my most requested song. That um, It's very old, it was written like I said, in like 1903, but um, in its waltz tempo, I used to sing my children to sleep with this, mm -hmm. and I've sung my grandchildren to sleep with it, so. And in a show, I always say, I hope I don't sing you to sleep with it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you start nodding off that chair, I'm gonna go, wake up. <laughs> Wait a second here. <laughs> Wait a second. to sailor what's a sailor like me he was not a sailor who sailed o'er the wild flowing sea he owned an airship had to sail like a bird on a wing and every night about sunset, he would fly to my window and sing, Oh, come take a trip in my airship, come take a trip to the stars, come take a trip out to Venus, come let us sail into Mars. No one will see why we're kissing. No one will see why we spoon. Come take a trip in my airship and we'll visit the man in the moon. One evening while sailing, we pass by the wide Milky Way. And as we flew in his airship, he asked me if I'd name the day. Just past the Big Dipper, I gave him my heart. We swore to each other that we would never 
Come take a trip in my airship. Come take a trip to the stars. Come take a trip out to Venus. Come let us sail into Mars. No one will see why we're kissing. No one will see why we spoon. Come take a trip in my airship and we'll visit the man in the moon. Visit the man in the moon. Such a unique song. Uh huh. It is. How did you find that song? Well, I mean, I, I actually heard a couple uh, of my friends who had moved to Mountain View for a while from uh, uh, Missouri. They sang a version of it. And so then I started looking it up. And, and this is how songs are, that from even different locations, you know, yes. uh, a word or two might be different in a line. Uh, you find that. Uh, so... Of course, I found a version because I, I, I love the song mm -hmm. and I found a version and learned it. And then when we were back together, I mean, it's very, very similar. I mean, the melody's the same, but there's just a place or two that the words are a little bit different. And uh, and I, I've, seen, I've seen that all my life in different songs, wow. you know. So. Like how there's a million different versions of Barbary Ellen? <laughs> well, where, yeah, the words, it's still the same story. Yes. And the same melody, but it might be that just a word or two is different. And that's, to me, that's part of the folk tradition. Yes. You know, it's, it's carried on from generation to generation, but there may be a little bit of a tweak that's a little different, you know. And I think that's, that's interesting, you know, because yes. like in Missouri, this is, well, this is the way we sing it there. It's just a little bit different than what we've picked up here. And there's no right or wrong. I mean, right. it's it's all, you know, so. Um, anyway. Um, I'll do a little bit. This is a newer song. Okay. But this, is, this is a song that was written for my family uh, when I was probably 16 by Charlie Sandage. And to me, it just kind of says everything in a, in a song about, it's called Neighbors, mm -hmm. and um, he wrote it for our family. Um, it's been recorded. Um, Joe Mullins and the Radio Ramblers kind of, they recorded it. Wow. And then on my, the one that I was telling you about called Now that I did with Charlie Sandage, all Charlie Sandage songs, the Isaacs sing it with me on it. But, but it's called Neighbors, and you know, you're not from Mountain View, but you're still my neighbor because we have a lot in common, mm -hmm. even though we don't live next door, you know. So I think that's, it's a very, uh, you know, and then we'll do a spoon tune or something. Oh, that sounds great. Choose your friends for their power, sell your love for their gold. It seems like a sign of the times, but some folks remember what neighbors are for. And some of them are neighbors of mine. I have lived among some good and gentle people. I have walked in a strong, growing land. I have sung songs I know I will hear once again, being sung by some heavenly band. Building cities of steel, building highways of stone, we forgot what this good earth is for, but somewhere there is land that's still held in God's hand, and some of it lies near my door. I have lived among some good and gentle people. I have walked in a strong, growing land. I have sung songs I know I will hear once again, being sung by some heavenly band. I hear sounds every day of a world going wrong. I hear talk of the times left behind. 
On a long summer night Full of fiddles and song Is a sound I will hold in my mind I have lived among some good and gentle people I have walked in a strong growing land I have sung songs I know I will hear once again Being sung by some heavenly band I have sung songs I know I will hear once again Being sung by some heavenly Band. What a good song. Isn't that a great song? And I definitely heard it before. You've heard so it before. I just don't I don't know which version I had heard. It may be. Maybe it was yours, Miss Pan. Well, I don't know. It might have been uh Joe Mullins. They might have because been. It would they played it on uh like serious no radio kidding. and stuff. So. I'm sure. This is in a max hunter folk song you know yes but this is one that i always heard aunt ollie do really quite, quite often if he's gone let him go god bless him wherever he may be he may roam this wide world over he'll find no other like me he used to be my sweetheart and sat right by my side. But now he's gone and left me. A many, many tear I've cried. There's many a change in the season. There's many a change in the sea. There's many a change in a heart of love. But you'll find no change in me. If he's gone, let him go. God bless him. Wherever he may be. He may roam this wide world over. He'll find no other like me. Some tell me to forget him. Forget him I cannot. For the name of my true lover is written upon my heart if he's gone let him go god bless him wherever he may be he may roam this wide world over he'll find no other like me. Isn't that a great song? I've never heard that You've before. never heard that song? It's amazing. Yeah. Do you know any of the origins of it? I don't. Oh, my goodness. But it's very old. I mean, yes. it's... Um, but wow. she used to... Uh, she used to sing that a lot. That's one I would ask her to do. So... Um, Especially in my solo show, I put that one in a oh, lot. Oh, yes. And you said you looked it up on the Max Hunter collection right mm -hmm. then? Oh, yes. nice. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. So, here's, uh, here's a little spoon tune. Ooh. Yes. Tell me about your spoons. Okay. These are just two regular spoons. And if you can see, see how they're getting flat on the, on the bottom there? Yes. That's for me playing them. Is that good? Well, I mean, it just eventually it'll. Be, and I have, I've had one pair that I wore out. It, it broke in half one of the spoons. So. Wow. Um, but these actually, I, I got these in a flea market in Branson, Missouri. Woo! I was gonna be on that uh, Branson Country USA, 
And I thought, well, well, I was needing some new spoons, so I go into the flea market, and I'm looking around, and I, I, I find these, and they're all taped. There's tape around them. So I go to the front desk, and I ask the lady, you know, would you mind to cut this, you know, apart? Because I, I want to try them. I play the spoons, and there's a man. <laughs> there's a man standing here, and he's looking at her, and she's looking at me, and they're kind of like, okay. So she does them, and I go, you know. And the man goes, you really make me play the spoons? He said, I thought you were talking about there's some game, spoon game. Yes, <laughs> like the card game. So, so uh, they started helping me find spoons. I came out of there with like five pairs of new spoons. Wow. So anyway. Do you remember which flea market it was? It was the one when you get off the uh, freeway there, the interstate, and you turn to the right going down towards the landing. It's it's on the right side of the road there. Okay. I can't think of the name of it, but it's it's on the right side and it's not stuff. far. Yeah. I think before you're kind of getting towards the, you know, train tracks. Kind okay. Of but anyway, I bought several spoons from them. Yeah. So I'll do one. Um, just talking about. This is called Fly Around My Pretty Little Miss. So um, you know that started out as a play party song because years ago they didn't they thought instruments, especially the fiddle, were. <laughs> and so they would sing it and they would dance they would dance the play party but there was no music um, so you know, of course I like the music and everything Fly down my blue list Fly down my daisy Fly down my blue list You're all the fun is crazy High up the cherry tree The rapper grows the cherries More you hug and kiss the girls More they want to marry Fly around my pretty little list, fly around my daisy, fly around my pretty little list, you almost drive me crazy. Gonna get some wheelie wheat, gonna get some barley, gonna get some wheelie wheat and bake cake for Charlie. Fly around my pretty little list, fly around my daisy, fly around my pretty little list, you almost drive me crazy. someone just show me kind of how to hold them and then of course that's the hardest part and so my poor mother my poor mother I would practice all over the house to any kind of music and it was just clack, 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 and then I drop them because I couldn't hold them and you know they make a loud noise when you drop them so uh, you know she was so proud when I finally figured it out but um, yeah Mary Gillahan is a great spoon player here too and so she showed me but the first I was, I had not been playing them very long at all, and my, the Simmons family, we went with Ramona Jones and her family to um, uh, Carter Fold to play, and so there was a man there who, he'd been in like the Navy or something, and he worked in the kitchen area, and so he would play the spoons to entertain the guys, you know. Well, I heard him, and I was like, I'm not playing my spoons. And he was so nice and so encouraging. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he said, you're doing really good. You go play them. And I did play them. But, um, you know, he was, of course, he did all kinds of stuff. You know, all this. And sometimes I'll do something real fun, but, you know, I'm, you know pretty much. Uh, but, you know, it's it's very unique. Yes. You know, it's, it's uh it's not a, an instrument you would like to have on Barbara Allen, but <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but fast tunes, and uh, I usually do like one in each half, you know, because it's just it's a novelty and it's kind of something different kind of to do in your show. But yeah, it gets uh, people really pumped up. Yes, and... yes, and you know, here's what I say about playing the spoons: they're never out of tune. You never break a string. Amen. And you're always ready for a potluck. 
A minute. So, hey. <laughs> it's the perfect instrument. And they're very easy to carry. Yeah. I used to carry them in my purse all the time. And... You get really funny looks when you go to air, through airport security. <laughs> I have had to play them before because they you know, just got spoons out. There. We gotta play them. Oh, well, show us. <laughs> you know. So, yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, is there anything else? Um, I mean, unless you can think of anything. It's been amazing. Um, like amazing. I cannot thank you enough. Well, thank you. I was so. Everyone is gonna so, enjoy this. I was so, so much. honored that you asked oh, me. Oh my goodness. I felt very honored. Oh. <laughs> and, and like I said, we could talk for, but I think we covered most everything. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> if you have anything else ever that you're like, well, come down here, Emily. I have to tell you this. I need, well, I need to, yeah, get this on record. Yes. Well, you know, again, like I said, the um, music, it took me to D.C. the first yeah. time. It took me to D.C. again for the Folk Life Festival. Um, my mom and I were on Hee Haw, and it was the Mountain Dulcimers. You, you know, so there's just so many opportunities that music can give you. Yeah. And so it's it's been very good to me. Mm. It's amazing. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, and this has been another edition of Songs of the Ozarks.